from the University of British Columbia and Martin Ordonez and this is Power Electronics. Today we're going to talk about the boost topology and we have an invited speaker who's going to introduce the topic. Hi, I'm Matt Amiot and I'm a power electronics researcher at UBC. Today, we'll be talking about the boost converter, which is a fundamental power electronics topology used to step up a DC voltage. Let's get started. The boost, or step up converter, is a switch topology that takes a DC input voltage, V in, and transforms it into a DC output voltage, V o, which is always larger than the input voltage. The circuit takes the input voltage source and uses two complementary switches, S1 and S2, to alternatively connect the inductor to either 0 volts by closing S1 and opening S2, or the output capacitor by opening S1 and closing S2. This creates a triangular current through the inductor. The output capacitor integrates this triangular current and produces an output voltage VO with minimal ripple applied to the load. In an asynchronous boost converter, the upper switch is implemented using a diode, which will automatically turn on when the lower switch, implemented with a controllable switch, such as a MOSFET or IGBT, is turned off. In the synchronous boost, the high side diode is replaced by another controllable switch, driven by a complementary input. This variation provides additional regulation features when compared with the traditional asynchronous boost. Usually, the asynchronous boost converter is designed to operate in continuous conduction mode. That is, the operating range is selected so that at all times, the inductor current is positive, which ensures the diode is forward biased. If this condition is not met, the equations that describe the behavior of the converter will change. This switch topology under continuous conduction mode has two different states. When the control signal S is high, the controllable switch turns on, connecting the inductor to zero volts, ground, and driving the inductor's current. During this time, the output RC circuit is disconnected from the input circuit because the diode is off. The output capacitor discharges, supplying the output current to the load. This is maintained during a certain amount of time called on time, T on, after which the control signal S changes to the low state, which causes the controllable switch to turn off and the current is driven through the diode. This current recharges the capacitor and provides the output current to the load. This is maintained during a period called the off time, T off. This cycle of T on followed by T off repeats continuously with the circuit alternating between its on and off states. The sum of one on time and one off time is called switching period and its reciprocal is called the switching frequency, one of the fundamental parameters of the converter. The ratio between the on time T on and the switching period, T, is referred to as the duty cycle, D. The off time can be found as 1 minus D times the switching period, T. In steady state, the relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage of the boost converter can be determined by examining the voltage in the inductor. In on state, when the switch is closed, VL is equal to the input voltage because S1 is connected to ground. This is maintained until the switch is turned off. In that case, the inductor voltage is equal to the input voltage minus the output voltage. This voltage is maintained until the end of the switching period when the sequence restarts. The voltage balance in the inductor requires that the integral of the voltage in the inductor be zero over the switching period at steady state. This means that the area under the voltage curve is equal to zero. Expanding the integral for the on and off times and considering that the voltage is constant during these times, the integral becomes the product of the on state voltage V in times the on time T on plus V in minus V O times the off time T off. Plugging in the relationships between the duty cycle and T on and T off leaves the equation only as a function of the input and output voltage, the switching period, and the duty cycle. Solving for the duty cycle gives the input to output relationship. Since D can only vary between 0 and 1, 
The voltage at the output can only be higher than the input voltage. The current in the inductor, IL, is equal to the input current, IN. The first step to find the inductor current is to consider its average value. Assuming 100% efficiency, the input and output power will be equal. Rearranging, the average inductor current can be expressed as the output voltage squared divided by the load resistance times the input voltage. The variation in the inductor current around the average value is controlled by the inductor voltage waveform found before, and the inductor differential equation which relates the derivative of IL with the voltage applied to the inductor. During the on time, the voltage in the inductor is the input voltage, a positive number. This causes the current to increase linearly until the switch is turned off. During the off time, the voltage applied to the inductor is the input voltage minus the output voltage, which results in a negative number. So the inductor current will decrease linearly to the same starting point, and the sequence repeats. If the inductor equation is integrated during the on time, the voltage is constant, so the amplitude of the inductor ripple is found to be equal to the voltage during the on time times the length of the on time, scaled by 1 over the inductor value. Plugging in the value of the inductor voltage during this time, V in, and the value of the on time, the duty cycle times the switching period, and finally replacing the switching period with 1 over the switching frequency, gives an equation for the amplitude of the inductor ripple current as a function of the converter parameters. This equation can be used to find the ripple in the inductor, or it can be arranged to select the inductor value for a given desired current ripple. The voltage in the capacitor VC is equal to the output voltage VO. The mean value of the capacitor voltage is equal to the mean output voltage, and by using the input-output relationship, we can see that it is equal to the input voltage V in divided by 1 minus the duty cycle D. When the switch is on, the current in the capacitor, IC, is equal to the negative output current, IO. Then, consider the capacitor differential equation, which relates the derivative of voltage with the capacitor current. From integration, the capacitor voltage can be found. When the switch is on, the capacitor voltage will decrease linearly since the capacitor current is negative. When the switch is off, the capacitor current is equal to the inductor current minus the output current. Again, the capacitor voltage can be found by integrating the capacitor differential equation. When the switch is off, the capacitor current is positive, so the voltage will increase to the same starting point. Here, we approximate this inductor current as constant, so the voltage ripple is linear. This sequence then repeats, giving a capacitor voltage ripple delta VC, which is the same as the output voltage ripple delta VO. This ripple can be found from the charge accumulated in the capacitor, scaled by 1 over the capacitor value. The charge delta Q is equal to the area under the capacitor current curve. Then, when the switch is on, the charge will be the output current times the on time. Assuming the output ripple is small, the output current is given by the average output voltage divided by the load resistance according to Ohm's law, and using the input-output voltage relationship, the output voltage can be expressed in terms of the input voltage. Also, the on time can be expressed as the duty cycle times the switching period, and the switching period, T, can be expressed as 1 over the switching frequency. This gives the output voltage ripple equation as a function of the converter parameters. To illustrate the design of a boost converter, a numerical example can be analyzed. The proposed boost converter takes an input voltage of 12 volts and converts it to an output voltage of 36 volts. The switching frequency is 100 kHz and the minimum load resistance, which corresponds to the maximum loading condition, is 12 ohms. The maximum ripple allowed in the inductor is 20% of the average inductor current under maximum load, and the maximum ripple in the capacitor is plus or minus 2% of the average output voltage. Consider the input voltage of 12 volts and the output voltage of 36 volts. The input-output voltage relationship states, V out divided by V in equals 1 divided by 1 minus D. Rearranging, 
the duty cycle is equal to 1 minus V in divided by V out, or 1 minus 12 volts divided by 36 volts, which equals 0 0.67. The average inductor current at the maximum load condition, 12 ohms, is equal to the input current, that is V out squared divided by R out times V in, which is 9 amps. The ripple in the inductor is limited to 20% of the maximum average inductor current. This is 20% of 9 amps, or 1.8 amps. From the equation for the inductor current ripple, solving for the inductor value, and plugging in the known values such as the input voltage, 12 volts, duty cycle, 0 0.67, desired inductor current ripple, 1.8 amps, and switching frequency, 100 kilohertz, gives the required value for the inductor, 44.4 microhenry in this case. The voltage ripple in the capacitor is limited to plus or minus 2%, or 4% total, of the average output voltage, that is, 1.44 volts. Using the capacitor voltage ripple equation, solving for the capacitor value, and plugging in the known values such as the input voltage, 12 volts, duty cycle, 0 0.67, Desired output voltage ripple, 1.44 volts, load resistance, 12 ohms, and switching frequency, 100 kilohertz, gives the required value for the capacitor, 13.89 microfarads in this case. So far, the analysis has been performed assuming that the converter operates in continuous conduction mode. An important parameter to find is the load resistance that will cause the converter to operate in the boundary between continuous and discontinuous conduction mode. When the average inductor current decreases, because the load resistance increases, the inductor current during the lowest part of the ripple will approach zero. When the average current is too low, the inductor current will touch zero. This is the boundary of discontinuous conduction mode. If the load resistance were to increase further, the relationships derived before will not be valid. The boundary of discontinuous conduction mode happens when the average inductor current is equal to half of the ripple. 0.9 amps in this case. Using this relationship between the output voltage and the current in the inductor, the load in the boundary of discontinuous conduction mode is found, 40 ohms in this case. With this, all the main parameters and waveforms of the asynchronous boost converter for this example have been found and selected. Today, we talked about the boost converter or step-up topology and we presented a design example if you want to see more videos on Power Electronics, please check our channel.